bit wet here. One of the most frequently asked questions that people comment on is, Johnny, I want to know what project cars you own currently, what state they're in, and also what your aspirations are for them, what's coming up. So this is the purpose of this video, is to show you the cars that I currently own, what I've had done to them, what I probably haven't, what I'm aspiring to try and do, and also a bit further along in the video, I'm going to reveal to you some foolish decisions that I've made. I have bought another two project cars. One's under this cover and one is not on the premises. So stay tuned and you'll get all the information about all the cars I currently own. I'm Johnny Smith. Welcome to The Late Break Show. Can you guess what it is? No peeking, not yet, not yet. Right, so the first car I want to talk about is this. My bargain Boxster, my 1,900 pound, 20 year old Porsche. This is a 986 2.7 Boxster. I've done one episode on this car on the Late Break Show and it didn't go according to plan in so much as I didn't get the car MOT'd and drive it home. So I have been back to pick it up to MOT it and drive it home, which is why it's here. I didn't, didn't do the trailer thing. I just thought I'd try and be a bit more brave. So there's a bit of a, an adventure involving how I got it back here and how that panned out, how the MOT panned out. And now I've got it back here. I have to say it, it ran really well, 150 miles back to here in biblical rain conditions. It does still leak a little bit um, in terms of the, the hood or something, which is why it, it has that problem with the, the module under the passenger seat. So that's the first priority is to get that done. The paint is fundamentally good. The bumper's slightly discolored, you can see. It's had the front and rear bumpers painted at some point in its life. But bodily, and I think the MOT guy said he was really impressed with its condition actually. So, I mean, two minds what to do with this, or possibly three minds. There's a lot of Boxsters. A lot of 986 boxes, and for good reason. They're a fantastic car. Um, but I can't decide whether to just clean it up and do um, all of the servicing and replace the components that it needs to make it just reliable and on the button and standard, or whether I kind of push the game on a bit in that YouTuber way and try to do something a little bit bold with modifications. And I'm sort of at that seesaw. You'll be the first to know, of course. So the Boxster, that is the Boxster at the moment. It is totally stock. It has a new pair of tires on the back to pass the MOT that match. And that's about it. Although the front ones are winter tires. Bit of an odd combo because it did have winters all round. Um, but it drove way better than I was expecting it to. I hate the look of these wheels. These are the worst Boxster wheels, I think. But wheels can be changed, right? So maybe that's one of the first things that's going to be changed. So we go from Porsche to Pauper. Porsche or Posh Beetle, depending on how you, you look at it. Um, the Beetle, I've just driven it here this morning. Uh, this lives at home with me. And you might notice that we're outside and not in a posh shed garage barn. And that's because currently I actually don't have my own garage. Um, we're having um, a, a barn to store the cars built that I'm gonna rent. But at the moment I actually don't have storage facilities, which has made this year, 2023, really difficult to work on my own cars and to store them properly. It's been a real challenge and actually it's been quite depressing. Um, the bug then, the bug lives in the carport. You can see in all of its faded Zenith blue glory. I haven't done a video on this for a long time. This car actually got back on the road during lockdown when my brother Greg said to me, come on, this car's been sat since 2004. It is 18 years dormant. It needs to get on the road. Come on, it's MOT exempt. Let's just get it on the road, make it run, run and drive. And if you haven't watched that video, um, I'll put a link above my head, but you really should. It's back in the Car Pervert video days when this channel was called Car Pervert. And I had such a good time spending a week with Greg 
going through the important things like the brakes and the steering, suspension, uh, wheels and tyres, and it, it really drives better than it ever has done. Honestly, it's more reliable and it's more peppy than it ever has been. But it does, I know people say it's got wonderful patina. The patina is deceiving on this. It's basically British Beetle run on a shoestring as a student, and it actually does need restoring. And I've been gradually saving the panels or trying to find certain panels. I've got wings. I'm looking for good quality rear lower quarters. Um, that's got Californian doors on it, so they're okay. But I want to find the best quality panels possible. And I don't want to start restoring this and dismantling it until I've finished some other projects, which I haven't finished yet. Talking of which, I have a piece of paper in my hand. And in this piece of paper, it says, my project cars that aren't actually here, they're away, having work done. The first of those is the most obvious, probably the most popular car we have on the Late Brake Show, which is the Austin Allegro Honda Civic Type R Sleeper Turbo project. And the Allegro Sleeper, which is at Fabco um, up in Lincoln, having its work done, has been, wor it's been progressing really, really well, actually. It's had a year of good progress, and I'm really pleased, because I know that 2024 is the year that that car will get back on the road. Unfortunately, I missed um, meeting Harris Mann, the designer of the Allegro. He passed away. Um, I was hoping to visit him with it, and I was hoping to make the 50th anniversary of the Allegro, which happened in 2023. But alas, the quality of that work is really good, and that car's been well documented. So you'll see a couple of clips of it as I'm talking. Um, but rest assured, that is systematically being built properly, and it should handle really well. There's a couple of things, a couple of issues that we've got just because it's a custom car, no one's really done what we're doing. So, but I'm confident that one's probably the most organized project that I've got. And talking of organization, that is one of my biggest issues. I'm not a very organized person. And when you restore a car, where you're trying to keep it on the road methodically as a rolling resto, you need to be organized. And that's something I do struggle with. This is my favorite car. People say, which car would you never sell? Which is your most important uh, car? It is that one. I know it doesn't look pretty, and I know it needs lots of TLC, but this car is the most important car to me. I get in it, it makes me feel special. Uh, I giggle. I seem to know my way around it when I'm working on it, because I get this sort of flashback to when I was 16 and 17. And there's a lot of joy to be had from it, and that's what these old cars are about, really, isn't it? Before I talk about the Tokyo Taxi, which is probably the most popular car on social media for the Late Break Show, but the least popular when it comes to videos in terms of views. It's strange. I absolutely love the Tokyo Taxi. It hasn't progressed much at all this year. I had the air ride suspension fitted. You can see it's on the deck now. Um, the car is in very, very good condition. I had it ice blasted, dry ice blasted underneath because the chassis and the engine bay is absolutely wonderful. It's really well preserved. So I don't want to modify it any more than this. I want to preserve it. And I'm thinking of adding some period audio to the inside of it. Um, and I still, and I've said this for a year and a half, I need to get both front and rear bumpers repainted because I think they've been painted in the past and they've been damaged when it lived in Tokyo as a taxi. But that's about it really. It needs, it deserves a proper, proper detail, this car. It really does. It deserves a proper detail. One other car that isn't here, I said about the Allegro isn't here, the Dodge. The Dodge is synonymous. I mean, even some of the logos with the Late Brake Show is the silhouette of the Dodge Charger. So my 68 Charger is not here at the moment. It's with my friend Simon, where my other project car uh, that isn't here, the, the Chevrolet Impala, it's with him. It's been having some work done for the last couple of months. And in truth, since lockdown, since pandemic, the Charger got used a lot for various events like our like, late break show events. And I didn't keep on top of the maintenance of it and it started to let me know after a while. So that's down there at the moment having um, some, some trim fitted. It's, it's had a, a tune up of the engine, uh, the carburetor needed uh, tuning. I got my friend Pete to do that, Pete Wiseman. Um, and there's just a couple of little niggles on that car which annoy me and I just want to make right. And actually it deserves, to have some TLC, because that car was put on the road in 2009. I bought it in 2008, when America went into its big recession. So I've had it on the road now for some time. And that's a wonderful car, and I, I actually really miss it. So the patinated charge is gonna have some more work done, and there will be an episode coming up soon. It's had a brand new set of white letter tires as well, some BF Goodriches. 
and that's special in itself. Yeah, it's a difficult one. This, this is an irreplaceable car, and I've had a lot of offers to buy this. I have considered it, but I just don't know. It's a really lovely, lovely car. What do you think? Do you think I should keep this? And if you do think I should keep this, should I do, do any other changes? Bearing in mind it is a very well-preserved Tokyo taxi. Anyway, next car. We are definitely in the Japanese quarter now. We're in the Japanese quarter. So people say, when I'm not testing new cars, what do I drive every day? What do I put massive miles on? And it's this and the car next to it. This is my Honda Insight. This gets a lot of attention, actually. People love this, and I'm glad because it's a really natty car, but it's so deeply practical. I'm averaging about 75 to 78 miles per gallon. And the Insight's done 300 and I think 25,000 miles. Still on the same engine, second clutch, um, and the battery pack is its second battery pack. And I recently, and this is gonna have a new episode done on it soon, I recently took it up to a chap called Peter Perkins in Wigan to have a few of the um, high voltage mods done. So it now has a plug-in um, charging conditioner for the battery, because these were never plug-in hybrids originally, to exercise that battery pack and keep on top of it. And also a hack so that I can increase the regen braking and I can take it away if I want to. And I can also take more power out of the pack to add more torque to the car. It does need a bit of TLC. Because it's done so many miles, the bodywork, I mean, it, it's never been painted, this car. It's just been touched up religiously. So I think it does need, um, it does need some modifications. It, I want to detail it. I've got some LED headlight bulbs and I obviously need to machine these headlight lenses like this. The engine bay I could do with sort of dry ice blasting it and protecting it. And although the car is aluminium underneath, there is some of that aluminium powdery corrosion. And I think I might dry ice blast that and give it a rust coating just in case, because this car lives outside, it works hard. And unfortunately at the moment it does leak from in there. You can see my immaculate piece of gaffer tape. It leaks where this piece of trim goes on there. It leaks through the clips which go into the holes and it goes down the rear pillar and then just soaks into the, the carpet and it makes the car smell like old feet. The clips are unobtainium, but I have found a set of clips, but I'm too scared to do it without the help of an adult. That is something I must do because it's irritating the hell out of me. And I'd like some paint correction on it. Both doors have got some bubbling at the bottom, which is a common thing. And I probably want to um, strip and protect the rear beam. And the other thing I've had in the boot for ages, bloody ages, which is a, real, a really good tune-up on these, is rear dampers. <clears throat> you fit adjustable rear dampers uh, from Gaz, who do fantastic dampers because the dampers are too soft on this. And you fit Deo Matiz springs, and I think might be Deo Matiz bump stops, and they transform the handling of the back end of the Mark I Insight. So I've got to do that. This car's a keeper. I've owned it twice. It's going nowhere. I just want to put more miles on it, frankly, and enjoy it. Also, forgot to mention, I still own some electric motorbikes. This, the Moto Chimp, and a 70s electric motorbike called an Aurenthetic Charger, not a Dodge Charger. I did a video on those yonks ago. But more importantly, we sell merch on the Late Break Show, like this, and this, and this, and this. You can buy all that stuff. There's a link in the description. Okay, so before I talk about my sort of family everyday Japanese car, this, the Honda Element, which has been so much more popular on the videos than I expected it to be. Um, and I'm glad because it's so damn practical. It's one of these cars which I do wish it was more fuel efficient. That 2.4 K24 engine is, is very reliable and strong, but it's not, and this is the four wheel drive version, it's not the most fuel efficient vehicle. So, but before I go into detail on this, I need to talk about the other car that isn't here. And the other car that isn't here is the, is the other American car. So I've got two American cars, the 68 Dodge Charger 383 four speed. And I've got my longest term project, apart from my first car, the Beetle, which is the 64 Chevy Impala SS low rider, which into, in 2024, I will have bought that car 20 years ago, I think. So I've pretty much been working on it for nearly 20 years. We've only done one episode on it on this show. And it's, 
crying out for an update. It needs a handful of cash spending on it, or maybe someone wants to collaborate on um, pushing that car forward quicker. I have been seriously tempted on the Impala to EV convert it, which is hugely divisive, but I actually would quite like to do it. It has a 350 small block, fairly generic engine. Simon Browse from um, Arrow Vintage Cars is doing all the work on it, and he's doing a hell of a good job. And it's at the point where it needs to have the hydraulic suspension fitted, which I've had in boxes for years. Um, and that's probably gonna be done by a chap called Pat Banks at Limit Fabrication in Norwich. That car is really exciting to me, but I fall in and out of love with it. I've been terribly disorganized getting that car on the road. I've never driven it. I've never started the engine. It still needs, every time I think it's nearly there, we decide to go a bit deeper into the detail and the fit and finish of it. But I want that car to be really good. That car was painted in 20, 2008 and it's never been outside. So yeah, that is gonna have an update quite soon, I promise. All right, I promise to inject some cash into it and some time. So I'll be the first one to put my hand in the air with the element and say, I pretty much bought it off one of the videographers on this channel, Matty, because I persuaded him to buy it in the first place. And when I needed a family car um, as a single dad, I had to have a car with more than two seats. And that's where this fits in perfectly. It fits bikes in it, my son's drift trike in it. It fits um, loads of merch for stuff like um, the Late Break Show events and, and Smith and & Sniff events. It's been an absolute soldier, but it now needs some TLC. Phil at Dream Automotive said to me, you need a new exhaust cam because it's warm, the lobes on the cam are warm and it, you can hear it clicking a bit. So I've bought a cam and I need to fit that. It needs a deep service. It needs some new suspension, I think, on the front and rear. I th I'd like it to be a little bit firmer. It almost certainly needs discs and pads and a fluid change because this thing gets used for high mileage a lot. There's a weird shimmy in the, um, in the diff at the back because this is four wheel drive. And the underpinnings are second gen CRV, Honda CRV. Um, this is the party piece. If you've seen the video before, it's had over half a million views, I think. That's the party piece and being able to hinge the chairs up like that. It's just, it's just wonderful. Um, but I want to protect this from winter salt. So I want to really go to town on the suspension components, making those um, protected and the chassis, inject it with some anti-corrosion stuff. And I want to detail it. It did leak through these, under these claddings, it leaks through the holes and drips into the car. I managed to solve it, luckily, but I want to almost take the plastics off and have it detailed by a professional because I think it deserves it. This is all original paint and this car is 20, over 20 years old now. First year of production, 2003. It's just such a shame Honda don't still make this. I'd love this to be electric, really. Um, maybe one day I'll convert it to EV. I think it's a fantastic car. Um, is there anything else to do? This really just suffers from lots of use. It needs the rear bumper painting. It needs um, the clips on the tailgate. Uh, the, the clips on the tailgate have come adrift. And all in the nooks and crannies, it needs a fine clean, I think, and, and a protect. Oh, I thought I'd solved it from leaking. I just found another leak. Oh, shit. Look. Damn it. Damn it. It's still leaking. So there we go. I need to take all those pieces of plastic cladding off and, and sort that. Yeah, so the, I've just got, a, I've had a bit of an issue with this recently. I know it's a Honda and they're really reliable. But thanks to a chap called Dave at Birmingham Car Keys, he managed to solve the fact that the aftermarket immobilizer that had been fitted when it first got imported from Japan was just going on the blink and it was not talking to the key and it was denying me the chance to start the car. It just wasn't firing. It was turning over, but not firing. Went to the moon and back trying to solve that. He solved it. It's now on the button again. The starter motor sounds worn. Basically, a lot of the drivetrain on this has just hit a point where it just needs a little bit of TLC. Maybe I'll tap up my friends from Denso and get a new starter motor for it and a new alternator and some new pulleys and maybe some other bits. <laughs> but that is the element. So what are you thinking then? You're probably thinking, what's Johnny bought? Well, the honest answer is I don't need more cars. Exactly the wrong time for more project cars when I have more than enough with not enough storage. Um, and I'm quite a chaotic, disorganized person. 
and I've just bought that. But just as I was buying the Boxster, you might remember a video. Do you remember a video where I did on um, this advanced salvage yard down in Poole, Trent's? Well, the Trent salvage yard, as I was filming it and talking around the process of dismantling cars in the modern world, I saw a car up on, high up on one of the stacks, like death row, basically. I kept looking at it all day going, what's the story behind that? I was intrigued and afterwards I kept saying to them, guys, what, what's the deal with that? And that car on the stack was this. I'm going to reveal it to you now in true YouTuber style. Oh, look. It's only a smart Brabus Roadster Coupe that has been vinyl wrapped at some point in its life. And I, with Trent's, agreed to have it off them on the proviso that I, I rescue it. So yeah, I'm like a, I guess I'm like a, an, an exotic animal refuge. I've always liked the smart Coupe Roadsters. I'm actually old enough to have been around when they they launched them and drove them in period. They were expensive, the Brabus edition especially. And I always preferred the, the hatchbacky coupe one to the bread van. So yes, the vinyl wrap is, is a bit weird. I'm probably not gonna keep it. It's a silver car underneath. Brabus cars were only black or silver. Trent's didn't know if it ran and drove and didn't really know the score with it, whether it was fully broken or what. But the, the main reason why I've decided to save this it's because it's done nearly 190,000 miles. I love the fact it's done so many miles in its life. So somebody's really enjoyed it. And it does actually run. We put a jump pack on it and it started and it reversed off the lorry and it's got a completely flat tire. So I just drove it to make sure it actually ran. Yes, it leaks. Yes, it needs quite a lot of TLC. These do, they have a whole set of mad foibles, um, and, but there's some fantastic forums and people out there that will help you. So I am basically looking for a partner who is a specialist in smarts, who might want to work with me to put this episode together or a couple of episodes, resurrecting this car from its death row stack at Trent's salvage yard to getting it back on the road as part of my fleet. Now, as a father of two, I seem to have a habit of picking cars with not enough seats that and that. But my other project car that I've bought is again a bit of a rescue to be honest. It's a bit of a rescue situation. You might remember when I went to um, the 2CV shop in Wiltshire and I drove the electric 2CV van and the electric 2CV car over the last couple of years. Well in their yard was a 2CV looking really really sad for itself. And over the last 12 months, Darren, the guy that runs the company, has been badgering me. Oh, you want this? You should save this car. You should. It's a lovely 60s 2CV. And I couldn't resist it. it I just, it's been sat for 10 years outside. There's a very odd, quite sad backstory with the owner that disappeared. And I've decided to buy it. And I am going to resurrect it. But I'm going to leave the patination as is. And just go to town on the fact that somebody's already spent the money putting a new chassis on it a 602 big block engine, disc brake, so later running gear under an earlier body. And I think it's gonna be glorious, so I don't need it. I already have the money for another car, but it's just the right car at the wrong time. So there we have it. We have patinated 2CV project. We have smart Brabus Coupe Roadster. We have bargain Porsche Boxster for 1,900 pounds, which actually seems to have mended itself, which is a bit odd. We have my first car, the 67 1500 Beetle. We have the Nissan Cedric Tokyo Taxi. We have the high mileage 325,000 mile Honda Insight Gen 1. We have the Honda Element family car. And then we have the, th the three, four, mm, some cars which aren't here. The Austin Allegro Civic Type R sleeper project, the 68 Dodge Charger, and the 64 Chevy Impala Super Sport Lowrider project. That sums up all of the cars that I currently own and hopefully gives you an idea of what is to come. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show and if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. If you want to support the channel via Patreon, we normally give you guys earlier access to the videos and I do a blog at least once a week explaining what on earth I'm up to and what I'm filming and maybe a bit more about these guys. Cheers.